Sir, ma'am, my name is Cadet Justin Pagilla. My team and I are here to present candidate solutions to the problem of refugee radicalization. I will introduce you to the problem of refugee radicalization and how we use systems thinking, problem definition, and idea generation processes to develop alternatives. My partner, Kennedy Edwards, will explain some of the feasible candidate solutions that we came up with and my other partner, Robert Cook, will provide systems life cycle cost estimates. We were given the initial task of addressing risk reduction for the radicalization of refugees entering the United States. And so in order to better understand this problem, we took a step back and conducted what's called systems thinking. Systems thinking allowed us to identify who's important, what's important, and the boundaries of the system that we operate in. Next slide. After conducting systems thinking, we determined that Syrian refugees are a primary concern. This is especially due to recent events in the Middle East, recent events in Belgium, France, and even ISIS, an ISIS-inspired attack in San Bernardino. And so we believe that addressing the risk factors associated with radicalization among Syrian refugees will give us the most bang for the buck, so to speak, in terms of addressing risk uh, in, in terms of addressing the risk of radicalization among all refugees. Next slide. Next slide. So, the RAND Corporation identifies six factors of refugee radicalization. You got the host country's administrative and legal policies, political and militant organizing, security, shelter, local economic conditions and resilience, and the conditions for youth. Now, all these factors play into creating resentment and tension between the, host the, between the host nation population and the refugee population. And so as the DOD, our role, along with the Department of Homeland Security, the FBI, the State Department, and any other agencies dealing with refugees coming into the United States, is to make sure that we do not add to these factors that cause radicalization, and to make sure that we do what we can within our organization in order to reduce these factors of radicalization. Next slide. So after, con after conducting systems thinking, problem definition, stakeholder analysis, we've come up with our effective need, which is to utilize DOD capabilities to address the risk factors associated with militant ra radicalization among refugees in order to improve the security of the United States. Next slide. So this is a little graphic that shows our stakeholder analysis. We identified who's important, how important they are, and after determining that, we created, next slide, our value model. So we determined what's important and who's important. So what's important? We determined that maximizing interagency intelligence sharing is important. We determined that we need to decrease perceptions of American imperialism and Islamophobia. And we need to increase favorable, favorable views of US military operations abroad. And then we need to maximize DOD involvement in non-traditional functions. So when we talk about non-traditional functions, we're talking about education, economic, uh, economic policy. So, in accordance, with these, in accordance with these objectives, we have value models, or as I was, we have value measures that we use to create our value model um, that measure every single idea, every single alternative that we come up with, we measure them in terms of their effect on these value measures. Next slide. So after creating a value model, we use a tool called Zwicky's Morphological Box. So along the top, you can see our solution design parameters. Their contrib contribution to homeland security, management of perceptions and tensions, and to develop asymmetric functions within the DOD. And so these are different options that we can take when these are different options that we can take in developing alternatives. And so after this, I'll hand it over to my partner, uh, Kennedy Edwards, who will talk about more. We'll, we'll talk more about the alternatives. Sir, ma'am, my name is Cadet Kennedy Edwards, and I'll be presenting our alternatives based off of our morphological box. Slide, please. When coming up with our alternatives, we chose five that would best reduce the radicalization of refugees. We chose these alternatives based off of our value model. 
um, which give us feasible, feasible um, alternatives. Um, alternatives 10 and 11 provide one-dimensional um, alternatives that only include one method of addressing the solution design parameters. As you can see, we chose one option for each category, which provides us just a, a one-dimensional approach, which is, um, you know, leads to quick and easy um, alternatives. Alternatives 19, 20, and 21, however, provide multifaceted alternatives that use multiple options to address the solution design parameters. For instance, alternative 21 is a multifaceted alternative that gives us, a multi gives us multiple options in each category. For the management of perceptions and intentions category, we, chose, we utilized options of increasing the amount of joint operations, decreasing the amount of unilateral operations, as well as introducing cultural sensitivity and professional conduct education into pre-deployment training. For the category of developing asymmetric functions, we chose options of utilizing DOD education activity, as well as utilizing DOD Office of Economic Adjustment. With this approach, we are utilizing multiple options, which um, provide us, I guess, a backup, so to say, in case um, one option doesn't work, and we're able to just, you know, um, include a variety of options, and it just makes it easier for us to make um, our alternatives. Um, for now, I will pass it over to my teammate. So, ma'am, I'm Cadet Rob Cook, and I'll be briefing you on the life cycle and system cost estimation. Um, as you can see from the graph, uh, this is a systems life cycle model. Um, let me orient to orient you first to the graph. So, along the x-axis, we have four stages of the life cycle: uh, conceptual and preliminary design, uh, detailed design and development, uh, construction and or production, and finally systems use, support, phase out, and disposal. Uh, each of the four stages are weighted differently, um, and they are weighted as follows: forty-five percent, twenty-five percent, ten percent, and twenty percent. Uh, we developed these percentages based off of uh, additional research we conducted um, based on the allotted budget for the DOD as well as assumptions we made uh, for the refugee radicalization problem. Uh, the importance of each percentage is that uh, as a system develops along the life cycle, it is important for the weight to be more heavily weighted at the beginning um, so the customer's needs and requirements are identified and therefore it saves cost. Uh, along the y-axis, you see uh, total percentage uh, from zero to 100, and then additionally we have four lines. Uh, these four lines represent the alternatives. Additionally, there's a fifth line underneath alternative 11. Uh, here, there's also alternative 10. Uh, the reason why these lines are on top of one another, one another because they are the same cost, and therefore the lines overlap. Um, the overall importance of this is that uh, it allows us to use this equation, which is total percent of cost for each stage uh, is equal to cost um, of the alternative times the percent of each stage. So 45, 25, 10, or 20. Um, and this, like I said, allows us to have an overall cost, estimate, cost estimation for the alternative. So in summary and conclusion, we've done systems thinking, problem definition, idea generation, and alternative screening, feasibility screening, in order to come up with different solutions, different candidate solutions to address the problem of refugee radicalization, um, and specifically to utilize DOD capabilities in order to improve the security of the United States. So, using these tools, we've come up with five feasible candidate solutions that have been life cycle cost estimated, and these solutions include, um, aspects of these solutions include an increased DOD day sharing capability, uh, reducing U.S. military operations abroad, increasing joint operations um, with other nations, utilizing asymmetric DOD functions, so functions such as the education activity or the Department of Economic Adjustment. And so the takeaway for you as a client and for us as a systems engineers is that now we have candidate solutions to work with so that you guys can make a decision and we can continue to aid you in the decision-making process through the use of systems engineering tools.